Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Listeners, this is your host, Constant Taylor, and welcome to the show, folks. Today we have a very special guest on the show, and let me tell you, you guys are in for a treat. You're going to want to listen to this entire program because... She's going to share some very powerful information with you on this broadcast. Our guest today is Maria Pearson. Maria has been speaking professionally for over 15 years, and the content that Maria primarily speaks on is leadership and communication. Maria has spoken primarily nationally and has also spoken internationally as well. She's based out of Stewart, Florida. She has a book coming out in the future called Own Your World which is about accountability and having a purpose. Maria, great to have you here. Thank you so much, Kim, since I'm, it's a pleasure for me. You're welcome. It's, uh, the pleasure is all ours. I'd like to kick off the show by asking you to tell us about your speaking business and what types of groups you speak to and the content that you cover with them. Well, the primary groups that I speak to are professionals that are interested in improving and developing their uh, workforce and their relationships. So one of the things that I focus on is leadership and communication. Um, there are the two things that are, are primary to the ability for us to grow our relationships and develop our workforces. Without uh, leadership and communication, you, you don't have the growth potential that you obviously would have um, with those two. Okay, excellent. And looking at let's let's take those two topics, uh, leadership and communication. We when you um, are first engaging with a company or a customer for the mm-hmm. first for the first time, uh, how do you right. go about assessing the the level of effectiveness of the communication in the uh, in the workplace? Well, one of the first things that I try to do is establish what their needs are and um, the culture of the organization and what it is that they're trying to um, resolve. So many times I'll open up a discussion with my client uh, asking them what are the initiatives that they're targeting, what are the areas that keep them up at night, and then thirdly, what are the things that they would like to see um, done better in their organizations um, as, as time goes on. And that gives me an insight as to the direction and their motivation as to where they want to go. Um, so that helps me tremendously in, in determining um, their needs. And then we set up typically a, an appointment or a, a session that I'm able to assess um, their key executives and um, determine, again, what, what are their, their areas that um, are strengths and then areas that can be improved upon, and um, as I tell all my clients, everybody can improve. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a very interesting point, and you kind of answered that at the end. I, I had a question in terms of when you when you delve into leadership in organizations, it's possible to step on toes and things can get sensitive. So I was going to ask you, how do you handle that to make sure that no one feels as though they are made to feel ineffective, their leadership is ineffective? Well, one of the things that I share with them is that, and and I kid with them, I I say, for me, I've never made a mistake. And they always laugh at that. And I say, but I've had a lot of learning opportunities. (laughs) And so as a a result of that, uh, you know, they go, okay, I see where she's coming from. And that's the reality is we try to break down some of the barriers that might be there, whether it be due to past experiences or egos or whatever it could be. Um, I'm uh, very interested in assisting them and helping them grow. And if I can do that, then I think I've done uh, a tremendous service, not only to their organization, but to the community at large. Okay. Could you give, and you don't have to say the name of the company that you don't want to, but could you give a quick uh, case study of a company that you, uh, that you engaged with, they had an issue and how you actually solved the, their issue? Yeah. One of the um, companies that um, I worked with recently um, had a need for their executive team to connect 
connect with their employees a little bit um, on a deeper level. So one of the things that I did with them was we did uh, 360 assessments um, of the executive team. And then from there, that gave us a lot of discussion opportunities as to what they wanted um, as their next steps. And so we had real uh, live feedback from not just um, the client, but they, their peers, their employees, and their um, bosses in terms of um, the direction that we needed to move in. Okay. And you're and, right. It, it would be inappropriate for me to share company names. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Say, uh, John Wilson really, really sucked over there. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Right. We yeah. don't want any of that. I know. You know. Confidentiality is a huge part of um, a consultant coming into an organization to, again, it, they're doing a good job at the level that they're at. It's getting them to get to that next level hmm. that is my job. And um, when when my clients do hire me, we we end up having a long-term relationship. And that's because I walk the talk. Hmm. <laughs> well, the you know, I'll say that the service that you provide is uh very valuable and I could definitely see the the need for it and that's uh mm-hmm. that's pretty that, that's pretty admirable. Now, the when you actually go in uh and have completed an assessment, can you think of a tell me about a moment that you that you feel most proud of in terms of actually being able to go in and actually make a difference in the organization? Well, it it, it, the interesting thing for me is, and it happens quite often, is at first, especially with seasoned and experienced uh, individuals in an organization, they know it all. You know, and here <laughs> right. comes this lady coming to tell them something that they don't know. And so sometimes they, they'll come in, their body language is a little bit off, their participation might not be there. But i got to tell you that my biggest excitement is at the end of a presentation, a discussion, a dialogue where they go, wow, this was so worth it. Uh, wow. That's, that, that's awesome. And that, yeah, that's when you really know that you've actually made a, made an impact because there, you know, there's a lot of egos uh, within organizations and there's a lot of, I'm sure people, uh, job security, feeling that their jobs may be maybe sure. on the line. So if you can go in there. Yeah, and- and I, I, w- I will tell you that one of the other areas that I focus on is um, trying to keep them to a point where their dignity is kept intact and that they feel safe. Hmm. So when I work with a client, whether it's one-on-one in a group, it, whether it's a, a, a speaking engagement, it's all about ensuring that I've kept the dignity of the other person intact and that they feel safe. The more safe they feel, the higher their communication, the higher their trust, and then obviously the higher their productivity. Hmm. So wh- whatever they're going to get out of the the encounter is really uh, parlayed by my ability to sense and address and keep their dignity intact and make them feel safe. Okay. Now for, for the, for the last segment of the interview, I'd like to delve into the book that you, that will be coming out in the future. Own your world. And let, let me say, by the way, I really think that's an, it's an awesome title for your, your website, own your own world and the book. It's a really, really, really powerful and a, uh, and a strong name. Could you tell me a little bit more about the, the content and, uh, what you, uh, sure. what you're achieving in that book? Sure. Well, the idea for the book came from as a result of years of working with clients who felt out of control. And so what they would say is, you know, it's not my choice. It's somebody else's choice. I don't have a lot of involvement in this if it were up to me. And what I, what I realized was, is that people were giving up their control. And there was a a variety of different reasons why they were giving up their control. But one of the foremost um, reasons is that they, they just didn't realize they could take it. They didn't realize they could actually own their own world and be purposeful and accountable and so much happier if they simply made that choice. The problem is making the choice isn't easy because it it, it goes back to all those tapes in our head 
that we were told all those years long ago, um, especially the formative years. And so one of the things that we do in the book is actually do a delve, uh, delving into who are we, what do we value, what do we care about, what were the impacts that we had in the past, and how do we now take that and create a purpose that's ours, that we can own, that we can be fully accountable for, that makes us proud and allows us to provide um, uh, something to society. Frankly, that's what we're all here for is giving to others. And Mm -hmm. that may not be the common goal, but for me it is. Mm -hmm. I agree. So when... Are, do you do the do you handle this engagement at a work level or is it a holistic level where you're incorporating work life uh family well it's all of the above but it starts with the individual mm-hmm. so it you know it, we are who we are and and that that person interacts as a business person as a mother as a father as a parent as a child as a friend, and the stronger we are in owning our choices and the world that we live in and that we've engaged in, the stronger all those relationships are. Okay. And the stronger the the productivity from it. And so whether it's business or a personal relationship, they need to be both productive. And I don't mean growing something in terms of a a product. I mean growing. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you hear this uh, phrase a lot, and and how do you feel about it, and how do you deal with it? We've always done it this way. Yes. It, that is a very common phrase that comes out, and, it, and it's, a, it's a real, and it should be a valued phrase, because people have done things a certain way, and if they've been working, that's wonderful. We need to keep doing those things that work well. Mm-hmm. The problem is we don't want to keep doing those things that aren't working well that might just be difficult to change. Uh So, again, the buy-in and the ownership of that comes from the individual. So if they see no value in the change, then that change will be very difficult to make. So it it, it is very common, and until you go to the root of it, is to uh, appreciate what's working well and then, secondly, work on those things that do need to be changed because they believe they need to be changed. Mm. Not because an outsider like myself says, you need to change. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And that's that's why they call it inspiration, inspired from it, it, within. It, it, from within. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Somebody Ex- asked me that a long time ago. They said, they asked me, you know, do you expect a, a leader to motivate? And I said, no. And they went, really? <laughs> I thought that was part of being a leader. And I said, no. A leader sets the environment and the tone for individuals to be self-motivated. Mm. Otherwise, I have to be on 24-7, either with a carrot or a stick, and I never want to have that full-time job. Right. Wow. Well, Maria, you have provided some very powerful and insightful information, and I'm sure the listeners uh, would agree. Now, in closing, I would like to ask – how can people learn more about the services that you provide? And if they'd like to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Well, that, my website is www.ownyourworld.net. And um, I'm easily contacted that way. My email address, if somebody would want to email me directly, is Maria, M A R I A Pearson, P E A R S O N, at ownyourworld.net. Okay. Well, Maria, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was extremely powerful and fascinating information that you shared with the listeners. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.